Hello and welcome to Feng Shui and Mindfulness over this holiday season. So I'm really excited to be here together. So the time of the holidays um, and whatever, you know, whatever you practice as a celebration for the holiday season, this is honoring all because it's just the time um, over the holidays where we come together, right, with intention, um, with family and friends. But what can happen to people is it can be it can be triggering to have to be around all the family, perhaps that they weren't together with all year, and there may be specific dynamics at play. And then there's a lot of things that come up for people around the holiday season where um, it's it's come where sometimes it can bring stress for people over the holidays. So let's just unpack that and let's talk about different ways that we can really honor ourselves, which is always in the highest good, which is always in the highest good of all. So I'd love to talk about in our environment and in our lives, how we can really uh, bring as much love, joy and embrace the holidays, but in a way that really aligns with us. So um, there's our personal care and self, you know, our self care. So let's talk about that first of all. So personal care to enjoy the holidays. So um, however long that means for you, um, we want to have our morning rituals. Now, wh whatever that looks like, it could be your morning ritual. One morning could be, I'm going to stay in bed and relax, right? Or it could be, I wake up and I like to meditate. I like to move my body. Um, you know, just that quiet space. So it is about creating that space. And a lot of the time on the holidays, there might be a lot of people in the home or you have to travel. So it's nice to have your own little, you know, your own little ritual bag that you can bring where it might have a candle, a lighter, your oracle cards and crystals, you know, where you can create a little altar for yourself wherever you are. Um, and then if you know that there's going to be a lot of people in your house, maybe you can set it up in your bedroom or you can do the rituals that maybe you would in another area of the home. But if there's a lot of people there, it ensures you having, you know, your private space still. We're going to talk more about this, but giving yourself permission to say no. I'm going to come back to that one. Um, engage all your senses. So the senses of which we will go into more of the visual senses, right? Or the sensual, being sensual. So the visual, right? The taste, the touch, the audio, right? The sounds. Um, and, you know, so really honoring those. So we're going to talk more about that. And then, you know, if you are concerned, some people don't have family to go to on the holidays or friends are away or busy or whatever it may be. And if you know that something that could be happening this year, it's like, well, really aligning with your community and finding what would be in your highest good and that would really serve and honor you. And to really know that you don't have to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the holidays. You know, the stores now, <laughs> we're celebrating Samhain, right? But already before Samhain or Halloween was done, all the Christmas stuff is already in the stores, which, you know, is, is already creating this energy of you got to prepare, you got to make this happen, you got to organize this, you got to shop, you know, and it's bringing this whole energy into something that was originally created by our ancestors thousands of years ago, which was the winter solstice, right? Which is the promise of the return of the light. It was a time in the long, dark winter that would bring us light, would bring us together. And then of course, from this time of winter solstice, that's where other holidays such as Christmas and everything have been created. So um, again, lights coming together, nice food, warmth, fires, the color red, right? So all of this has been brought in to bring us this, this warmth at this time of Christmas or holiday, whatever holiday, you know, you're celebrating over the next few months. But unfortunately, it's got very commercial, right? And people think it's about the buying of the presents and stress and, you know, people pleasing and overdoing and not honoring ourselves. So this is really an invitation to come back 
and reflect and set the intentions of what it means for you and how you wanted to feel and how you wanted to look and you know giving up expectations and the people pleasing or whatever that looks like so it's okay to say no if it means saying yes to your body your mind or your soul right so I am a firm believer in boundaries in speaking your truth in being assertive because otherwise you are not listening to yourself you're not listening to your body and you're you that's when you are people pleasing you are coming from you know perhaps there's codependent you know it's like well if I I'm, I'm scared if I don't if I speak up these people or this person won't want me in my life in my, their life anymore right so it's really learning to speak your truth from this place of love and self-worth so you know if this is a new skill to you, boundaries um you just kind of got to start practicing with small steps and when people ask you to do things that you'd normally go, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem, <laughs> right? And then afterwards go, how am I going to do this? Or why did I say yes to this? You can even just start off with, oh, okay, let me think about that and I'll get back to you. So it gives you time to reflect on things. And do you really want to be doing that? And if you were to say yes, why are you saying yes? Is it that you're frightened that they won't be your friend anymore? Or if you do say yes, or is it that... Um, is it that you really do want to say yes? But when you give yourself time to pause and to breathe, you get to really think about it. And the more and the more you practice this in your life, the more aware you find all the areas that you've just been doing things by default. There's a great book by Terry Cole called Boss Boundaries that I love and I would highly, highly suggest. And then over the, over the holidays, I mean, every day, it's really important that we acknowledge our feelings and give time to process them, right? So if you're feeling anxious about seeing specific family members or you're feeling anxious about the holidays in general or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling sad or you lost somebody around the holidays or what, whatever it's bringing up, that it's not pushed down, it's not ignored, that you give yourself time to process how you're feeling and allow whatever needs to move through to move through, right? Again, that's where choosing not hustle and bustle. Instead, you're choosing to align with your highest self. You're choosing to listen to your body, your emotional, physical, and mental body. Perhaps you journal um, and you give yourself a chance. And the beautiful thing about feelings, you know, emotions are they just come up they want to be felt and then they move on. But it's when we, we don't give ourselves time to process that we push them down. And then they, you know, come out in ways that we'd rather they don't. So the next, I think, best gift you can give yourself daily and throughout the holidays is self-compassion. Self-compassion. So if we are feeling any of the things that we we're talking about or stress of being with certainly family members or stress of you know, what I eat, everybody's going to be drinking, I don't drink, or I do, I, I want to drink, or, you know, or whatever it is, fill in the blanks, you know, or everybody's bringing me gifts, and I don't have the money, or I, I can't say no, whatever, whatever it is, it's coming up. If you can just pause and take a breath, and then just put your hand on your heart, or hold your own hand, or just say, ah, oh, you know, this is really hard right now, I feel like under pressure or I'm feeling stressed out or this is feeling like a lot. And you just acknowledge how you're feeling. You acknowledge what's coming up. And then you can just, you can just put your hand on your heart. You can hold your own hand. You can touch your own face and you can just breathe and stay with yourself and be present with yourself. So we talk about presence. Well, the very, very, very first place we have to start is presence with ourselves being really present and loving with ourselves and when we notice those thoughts the critical thoughts the monkey mind the inner mean person come in right we can acknowledge those thoughts and bring the consciousness to them like are those thoughts are they are they true no they're not true or perhaps someone was and it's not anymore or whatever it is but if we can bring 
compassion, self-compassion into everything we do in our we come from this place of love, like ultimately that's where it comes from. And it allows us to go through life with compassion and to emanate that. And through what we hear and through what we see, you know, really see and hear the truth of things. So I would say that's one of the greatest gifts. And, you know, being compassionate for another and once we've held space for ourselves. And then there's the self-mothering, right? So you know, some have mothers during the holiday season, some don't. Some have mothers, so that mothers that didn't naturally have the, the mothering kind gene, right? So it can it can bring up a lot knowing you've got to go to your parents or to your mothers or whatever it is for the holidays, right? So one way to start to work through that is mothering yourself, like that self-mothering, right? So, you know, it's like, how would you how would you ideally think you'd want your 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 mom and love your loving mom to speak to you? Oh well, that's where the compassion comes in, and that's where the self care comes in. And what do I need right now? Oh, I just need to rest, or I need to take a bath, or I need to get out in nature. And even the mother, though the mother that has the boundaries, like and when you're going for the maybe unhealthy choice that you'd rather not. Your mother can come in as well and just be like, hey, you know, do you think that will be in your best interest? So it's like you can bring that beautiful mothering energy. And that's why we call mother, mother earth. Right? And that's why, you know, going out in nature and bringing nature into our home and connecting with nature allows us to connect with that unconditional love all around us. And another thing is is being really mindful when we do notice ourselves coming together for gatherings, whether it's in our communities, in our families, and we notice ourselves things coming up, or we notice that there could be drama or there could be an energy, you know, being a very empathic person, right? Being very aware of energy, you know, we can walk for me personally, and I'm sure a lot of you beloveds that are into you know feng shui and energy are very aware of coming into a space whether it's the energy of the space the energy of the people in the space and just feeling if something's a little off you know or a lot off so there's something really powerful and once you've done your inner work you can come into a space and go okay that's mine that's my trigger that's and you can bring the consciousness into that moment that's mine because I know from the past and it's like some of these things from our past are are still there but we can bring our consciousness in we can use our tools we can take a moment we can sit down we can breathe we can use some self-talk we can weave light through and clear the energy and then it's knowing what is not ours and that's really powerful for people pleasers, people that tend to be very sensitive, codependents be like, no, 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 that's not mine. And I'm not taking that on. And that's where the boundaries come in, the energetic boundaries as well. I think it's a real gift as well. I love the mirror exercise. So when we feel ourselves, something coming up for us, when we're with another, it's like, okay, I can see that part of me. And maybe it's the part that you've already done a lot of work on, but you can say, I can see myself in you. And it automatically, like, it's like it takes away um, the charge of something that we might feel just to be able to be like, oh, I, I've seen that before. I know that, you know? So ways that you can really take care of yourself over this, this holiday season is spend time in nature, no matter what the weather is like. Just, you know, wrap up if you need to and just get out in nature and spend time, you know, leave all the digital stuff away at home and just get out in nature and sit under a tree or hug a tree and get into a forest, go down to the beach, sit by a river, whatever it may be. And do not over schedule. So that's where that no comes up. You know, just really sit with it. If you're invited to lots of different events and you know, you've been to them previous years and you think, what am I doing here? Like, take a breath and really think about everything from this real conscious place, like feeling into it. How does it feel? And, and are you going to decline or say yes? And does it feel amazing? You know, so look at your schedule. Don't overburden. Don't stress yourself out. Take plenty of digital detox, like 
whatever that looks like for you, whether it's first thing in the morning, you get up and you meditate versus get on your phone. Perhaps you go for the walk in nature, but you leave your phone behind. Or perhaps like you want to spend time with family and community and you can just put the phone away. And then as we're at this time, well, all of us on the on this side of the hemisphere, where it's the darker part of the year, like we are invited, just like the animals, just like nature, to hibernate, to go inwards, to nap as much as possible, sleep, take the naps, you know? I mean, that can happen all year long, but even more so. It's like we need more sleep at this time of year. Take time to read, to journal. So reading, whatever it is that fills you up, and journaling is so powerful. So if you notice yourself reacting, or if you notice yourself feeling into energies or uh, feeling triggered, just journal it, journal it. What's coming up? Why is it coming up? And it's a beautiful way to release it and to work through it as well. And so if, if it's in your own space, just make sure that you have created your own sacred container. Just like I said, if you wake up in the morning and you want to meditate, well, make sure you've got a space for it, whether you, you need a meditation room, a yoga room, a creativity room, a quiet room, a dance room, whatever it is that brings you joy, right? Um, create the space for it, even if it's a corner in your room, perhaps it's a little area inside, perhaps it's out in your deck, you know, we all have a corner or an area that we can create our own sacred space. And you know that saying, you know, create the space and they'll come right so it's like you create that environment for yourself which invites you to get up to meditate or invite you to roll out your yoga mat or perhaps it stays rolled out all the time but whatever it is it's going to create these really beautiful nourish, nourishing nurturing um practices so over the holidays a lot of time people, you know, things come up for people and they're worried about putting on weight and they're worried about are they eating the foods if you're vegan and you're going somewhere that's all, you know, not the foods you can eat, you know, so it's really being mindful about that. And there's some really simple things that we can put into place every day in our lives, but, you know, that we can bring into mindfulness over the holidays. Um, we can choose a smaller plate, right, versus a huge plate and having to fill that up fill your plate up with lots of beautiful vibrant vegetables and most importantly listen to what your body needs and not what your mind needs or your emotions and that's where allowing yourself to process emotions allowing yourself to journal allows you to listen to your body and is your body hungry or is your body had enough i love the practice of eating slowly and chewing your food maybe 12 times at least they say right to really digest the food and allow yourself to really taste the food. Again, that comes back to being present, right? And really, really honoring that sensual essence of taste. And that allows us to be more present and everything is richer in our life when we are. And then we always want to bless the food and give gratitude to the food and give gratitude to the, the plant kingdom, perhaps the the fish life, the, the animal kingdom, you know, whatever it is that honors your way of eating. And we really want to bring the energies in of, of forgiveness, right? Of, of gratitude, um, our self-worth over ourself, our, our net worth, right? And how can we show up as that loving vessel, that loving vessel of ourselves, that loving connected vessel and and be of service and true being of service not people pleasing right so and we know the difference really easily when we're being of service it enlivens us it makes us feel good but when we're people pleasing we can feel resentful so that's a very very easy easy way to distinguish between the two and then of course over the holidays just know if, if it's if financially it's causing you stress just know what your budget is again it's get really clear on your boundaries this is how much and you know if it's a family gathering you can always ask it, let's say there's 10 people you can ask that you know it's decided words you know a secret santa type of thing and you just everybody gets each one person a gift and then it takes so much of the stress and it takes away from it being a really commercial holiday to being present be it's not about the presence it's about being present right so before you do the gift or food shopping, decide on how much you want to spend. 
or perhaps like the gift is um, a donation to someone's charity or a homemade gift or you know as I said some kind of a family gift exchange um, so it's really about how can we be present how can we take the stress off the pressure the pressure off and instead um, come more into that energy of peace and those intentions of what you want for your holiday season and to just breathe ah, and stay in your center and it's using your tools and bringing your practices with you. The practices aren't just for when you're feeling great. The practices are that they're like when you're cutting wood and you're carrying water and things come up. It's like, okay, I'm going to use my tools now. I'm going to practice all these beautiful practices that I know that help me stay in my heart, that help me stay in my center. And then, then you can just radiate out from that place. And then as an act of self-love and self-worth and giving yourself what you need, perhaps it's you want extra support in the holidays. Perhaps it brings up a lot, wherever, whatever is happening and coming up and you can seek professional help if that is what speaks, because that is 100% an act of love, of compassion, of honoring who you are. And then spending time with your community, your soul family over the holidays. So perhaps you've got um, family obligations or you love to spend time with your family. It's, it's mixed for people over the holiday season, right? Um, but it's very important that you have your community, your tribe, your tribe, right? Your like-minded, where you can just be 100% yourself. 100% and you inspire each other and lift each other up and help each other grow. So if this is something that is not present in your life, I really invite you to seek it out, to seek out your community, go to places where it's things that you love, right? Do that and honor, honor that and, um, and create those connections. So another beautiful practice is if you're spending time over the holidays and you notice yourself getting stressed out or anxious or triggered in some way, if, if you've really kind of used your tools to reground and recenter yourself, you can just bless everybody and you can just see spirit in everyone. Anybody's eyes you look into, you can just see spirit flowing through. And the moment you do that, you can be like, oh, we're sisters, we're brothers, you know, and you can just bless everybody. And again, it's that mirror exercise where, okay, that that I see in you, it's something within me. It's something that I haven't honored. It's something I haven't listened to. It's something that I haven't acknowledged or it's something that I've healed, but I can feel that, that, that in you too. And I bless you, you know, and right away that just shifts the energy. And if you are going to, things over the holidays events gatherings that that you do it does feel in alignment to go to because you can say no to anything you wish but it does feel in alignment but you are concerned about being in the space you can protect your own energy you can be really clear on your boundaries energetically and physically when people ask inappropriate questions you can say you know that's not something I'd like to discuss and you can get really clear in speaking your truth and you can also energetically protect yourself. So you can ground your energy down like we did, right? Ground your energy down into the earth and connect up with spirit and just surround yourself in this beautiful white light, right? You can call in guides that you like to work with. Um, you can work with the flame. You can work with the golden flame. You can work with the purple flame. Really feel into that and then just go in with that, your whole energy field with protection, so with an energetic protection. So let's talk about some ways in our environments through feng shui that we can cre create this beautiful environment that can help us have that harmony and that joy and that celebration and that deep sense of peace in our homes. So whether you know, you're know you gonna be doing it from your space or going spaces, Having an environment that supports us, that we don't just survive in, but we can thrive in, it's really important and it is absolutely your birthright. So the first place I would start off with is just getting it really, really clean, 
right? Just that's like energetically cleaning it, physically clean it. And we'll talk about the energetic cleaning of us and, and just get everything in good working order. You know, if, if there's a ring out in the stove, get a fix because everything in our environment is a reflection of how we're feeling internally. So when we get our home up and everything flowing and feeling good, that's what we're energetically doing within ourselves. And we're saying we deserve it. So the front door in feng shui is where all that energy and the chi flows in. Not all of it, but a lot of it. It's known as the main mouth of chi. So we want that to be warm and we want it to be welcoming. We want the front door to be in good working order. We want the knocker or the doorway bell to work. Um, you can put a beautiful wreath on there and you can create your own. You know, and the circle represents infinity and the evergreens, like all of them bring in their own energy and connecting with nature. You can put acorns on it. You can put um, citrus and anything that resonates with you and it brings that energy in of the essence of what you bring, want to bring into your space. You want to make sure the front end is well lit up and it's warm and it's welcoming and we don't want anything pointy or prickly at the entrance. We want all the energy to flow, having the doors and windows open, right? So every day, I, I love to do that ritual in my own home. I open up all the doors and windows, whether it's windy or rainy or sunny or whatever the weather is, because it just cleanses the space. It lets go of all the old energy. It's like us taking a deep inhale and exhale. Same for the house. It just lets it clear out all the energies so it's open and beautiful and flowing. And then for the holidays, you don't have to subscribe to exactly what the holiday decorations are. You get to create your own intention and create that beautiful, balanced and harmonious decorations that honor you and that are true to who you are, you know? So bringing the nature in, of course, mistletoe is a big one it's in, in, and it brings in calmness and peace of mind. Um, and it's a very, very healing, magical plant. So you can bring, this is a beautiful invitation to bring nature in at the holidays, right? So, you know, anything we're picking, we always ask for permission from Mother Earth, from nature. And if we receive a yes, we can gather beautiful pieces to bring all around our home. The poinsettia plants, right? Those beautiful, red, vibrant. Um, we can put them in pairs, right? And they represent love and connection. Um, the southwest area is still in love, but in feng shui for the year 222, we don't really want to have red in the southwest. So south is the next best area to really support that intention you want to put out in the world. So two red poinsettia plants in the south would be beautiful and it supports all your relationships. And, and if you put it in there with the intention of passion and romance, it will support that too. I love to bring nature in um, all over the home, but you can also do it with essential oils, right? And um, you can use specific essential oils. You can use a diffuser. Um, I love diffusers. I diffuse oils every day. And of course, the seasonal ones are more like pine and clove, um, but lavender is for is for peace. Uh, you can do jasmine for the heart, or you can change it out. You know, pine will actually increase energy levels. And clove is actually very good for cleansing, cleansing the space as well. So use of essential oils is beautiful. And then if you choose to bring in a live tree and, you know, nowadays you can do it in lots of beautiful ways. You can get a pot of tree and you can bring it inside and then you can plant it afterwards. Of course, you can use... Um, you can recycle the tree after, of course, but you could also use, they make all sorts of wonderful trees nowadays um, that are reusable and you can use it from year to year. So it's, it's personal preference. Um, for this year of 2022, we'd like to place the Christmas tree in the Northeast or the East, the Eastern area of your home. Um, they're the best feng shui locations. So Northeast or East, they're the two suggestions because we tend to have lights, which is a lot of fire and feng shui. And the center of the home is not the place that we'd like it, even though that normally would be a great place for the tree, just not for this year. Next year it would be fine. And then, you know, when you put up the decorations or even when you make the decorations, you can that can be a beautiful exercise to bring everyone together. Like just the making, whether it's painting rocks or 
gathering acorns or pine cones together and you know placing them around the home creating a beautiful infinity wreath you know with evergreens like these are things that we can do that this is what it's really about bringing everyone together opening up creativity connection to the earth connection to these and creating your own rituals and ceremonies together with your loved ones and as we decorate for the holidays we want to be careful to not over decorate things clutter things right we don't have to use all our decorations um and you don't have to use the same i mean we want to live in harmony with the earth and environmentally friendly you don't have to keep using the same decorations if they don't resonate maybe you could pass certain ones onto a friend or find a you know a way a way to pass them on that be reused right because sometimes our trash is other people's treasures and vice versa so we don't have to clutter up our spaces pick and choose pieces that that really bring you joy you know like Maria Condon's work like does it bring a spark of joy when you touch it how does it make you feel when you look at it how does it make you feel so there are all those those senses the visual sense right and not cluttering up our space right um and, and creating absolute beauty in the space and that's your birthright to have a home like good feng shui is having a home where everything in it inspires you and makes you happy so surround yourself with objects and holiday decorations that you love if you don't like it don't put it up and just because somebody gave it to you you don't have to use it just because you inherited you don't have to use it you know um and, and don't just put them back in a box if they're not resonating. Maybe donate them or pass them on. Angels and cherubs are a beautiful way for bringing in the holiday season symbols, bringing um, abundance into your home, bringing peace, inspiring. So, you know, you can bring in the colors, the symbols that bring joy to you and the intention you know if it's more love bring in the colors you know obviously the greens are great because it's a heart chakra or maybe it's more abundance you bring more of the golds you know um so to increase abundance you can bring in um you can put coins on the tree obviously some can do the chocolate coins if you like if you have a dog be careful <laughs> i remember one year <laughs> Um, we came home to our dog had eaten the tree was down on the ground and my gosh because chocolate is not good for animals um, you can put gold and silver ornaments that represent prosperity and abundance on the tree um, you can hang oranges with cloves in them as they represent good health and they smell amazing you so see you can do that and so any of the like the pine cones or the evergreen that you bring in or the cloves or the oranges, they're going to bring and heighten in that sense of smell. So everything we're talking about is honoring the senses, honoring our connection to nature, the land, to ourselves, to each other, to our family, to our community. And these are really what it's about. The holiday decorations, you can bring in some bells because they're really good for energizing the space and revitalizing, right? So um, you could hang bells on the home, on the door, on the tree. Um, and the, atten the intention of, as I said, of the winter solstice is bringing warmth and um, hope and promise and the return of light into this year. You can add candles to the tables around the house as candles. You know, the moment we light a candle, it's like opening sacred space. It's initiation. It's, you know, and that is the representation of the promise of the return of the light, uh, honoring the light within us and in, in, in honoring our hearts, right? And it brings this beautiful positive energy. And of course, I'd rather use candles that are wax and um, natural with essential oils versus anything with chemicals in it. And you could bring wood into the decorations, simple things like pine cones and the evergreens, holly around the house with the beautiful red berries, um, any of the evergreen just hung around your, your home. This is a beautiful way to bring nature in, to bring beauty, to bring grace, to bring connection. And any of this time, uh, as we're in late autumn, moving into winter, bringing the energy of coziness and comfort into your home with throws, warmer colors, maybe the earthy colors, the warmer orange colors, like bring it around your space, have extra throws in different areas that invite you to take those naps, invite you to snooze, invite you to pause and to go inwards, just 
exactly what this time of year is inviting us to do, to go inwards, to reflect, to like, this is the yin time of year. This is a slowing down, being present, spending time with ourselves, spending time with with spirit, with, with the land, and then spending time with our family and our communities. And then it's really important to space care your home regularly, right? So if you have visitors coming and going, we want to make sure that we keep cleansing the space because even if it's beautiful friends and family, people still come in and leave an energy in our home, right? They still come in and leave that space in there, that energy behind. So we always want to be cleansing. And if we have colds or we have arguments with people or, you know, whatever it is that comes up, it just energy, you know, goes into the walls, it goes into the ceilings, the carpets, the furniture. So for regularly cleansing, we move out that old stagnant energy and we, we have this beautiful, like free flowing energy in our space. And then we want to give gratitude and thanks. We want to be in this, this place of gratitude and thankfulness for our home, for each other, for the abundance, for the candles, for the warmth of running water in our home, the electricity, you know, just giving thanks to the shelter our home provides to have family members, to have food on our table. And the moment we come into this place of gratitude, like, and we embody it and we feel it, all the intention, all the energy goes there. And then really what happens is it brings us more to be grateful for. And it allows um, that sense of lack or victim, you know, it allows it to just kind of melt away. And then after the holidays, we want to be mindful, be mindful of what we keep and be mindful of what we let go of and how we dispose of it, right? So the gifts that we were given, um, decorations that we're no longer in alignment with, you know, all of that. We want to, like, and that's what this time of going inwards is. And, you know, it's like winter lets this part of itself die right now. It goes into hibernation. It's let its leaves go. So this is a beautiful time for us to go inwards and be like, okay, what do I need to let die? What do I need to let go of? Old stories, old thoughts, old programming, old ways of being. And how can I dispose of it? How can I compost it back into the earth? So the same thing we want, we want to create these beautiful, healthy ways of beings in our home as well. So if you did have a tree, what way are you going to dispose of it? If there is gifts that you're no longer or that you, you don't want, like how can you environmentally, sustainably pass it on where it's honoring everybody, right? And then most importantly, like I've been talking about, holidays are for about being present with ourselves. And if that means saying no, and that means for you this holiday, just curling up with a book and journaling and meditating and just that if that really honors you being present with that if that means spending time with friends and family and putting away phones and just showing up and being present that's what's honoring so just when we take the time to pause and really feel into that we know what that is for us so that's really really important lovies so thank you so much for, for joining. Um, I'm wishing you just a beautiful, beautiful holiday season.